career best performance from left arm spinner Tom Smith meant that Adam Gilchrist's final match for Middlesex ended on a happy note as the Panthers beat Kent by 13 runs at Lords. Gilchrist won the toss for his last match and batted first, but it was his Australian countryman David Warner who got his side off to a flyer. He's still waiting for his first really big score for Middlesex, but he rarely hangs around and he was soon tucking into the bowling of Azza Mahmood as he played a series of exceptional shots to get his side moving in the right direction. The way he started the innings, it looked as if Middlesex were going to make hay on a worn Lord's pitch. Gilchrist began by letting his partner steal the limelight, but he was determined to end his spell at the county with a big score of his own. He struck the first six of the day with a fantastic pull shot into the grandstand. In spite of a maiden to the final over of the power play, Middlesex still had 52 runs on the board at the end of six overs, but they then lost both batsmen in quick succession. Warner on 29 was caught at short third man off Malinga Bandara. And Gilchrist followed for 28, caught by Martin van Jarsveld off Simon Cook. Middlesex now found life rather difficult as the runs began to dry up a bit in spite of this boundary from Neil Dexter, who will now be taking over the captaincy reins from Gilchrist. He was next to fall for eight with a score at 69 for three in the 11th over as he found Darren Stevens at long off off Bandara. David Milan had been brought in ahead of O.A. Shah and he showed why with a couple of big blows as he tried to get these stuttering innings moving again. His was an important innings in the match as Middlesex started to pick up the momentum once more. Shah though never really got going and when he tried to, he was caught at long off off the bowling of Simon Cook for four. Milan's innings was now growing in stature as he continued to keep the board ticking along. He made a name for himself in this competition a couple of seasons ago with a hundred and a third six showed that he's lost none of his talent. He'd made 41 off 25 balls when he perished going for another big hit with a score on 113 for five in the 16th over. Scott Newman made a quick nine but also fell looking to try to increase the rate. Every run now appeared vital in what was not going to be a match necessarily full of runs. Kent had given a debut to left-arm seamer Ashley Shaw and he bowled pretty well until, crucially, Gareth Berg took him to task in his final over. While his first six only just cleared the ropes, his second carried high into the stands. It was just the finish Middlesex required as they ended on a competitive 154 for six from their 20 overs. Kent made a steady, if not barnstorming, start with Rob Key and Van Jarsveld playing watchfully. They were helped not once, but twice by something you don't see often in one-day cricket these days, the dreaded overthrows. Twice Key went for a sharp single, and on both occasions the throws at the stumps were off target and far enough away from the fielders backing up to go to the boundary. Not many batsmen could have had two fives to their name. There was some more conventional cricket from both openers who looked to be setting the ideal platform for their team to make an assault on their target. By the end of the power play overs, they'd put on 48 and looked very handily placed. The introduction of Smith changed the complexion of the match, however, as in his first over, he saw Van Jarsveld slice a shot to debutant Josh Davy at backward point, and he was out for 25 with a score at 54 for one. The Middlesex bowlers now started to put the squeeze on, making life difficult for the Kent batsman. Key helped himself to another four, but Geraint Jones never got going at all and was stumped by Gilchrist off Smith as he tried to advance. Key's wicket was now Key and Middlesex got it when he couldn't get enough on a shot off the excellent Dexter and was caught by Tim Murtra at long on for 42, made from 40 deliveries. Kent was simply unable to get either Dexter or Smith away as Gilchrist chopped and changed his bowl as well. Only Darren Stevens looked like he could win the match for Kent as the run rate required moved into double figures. Smith returned to take a third wicket, although it took an outstanding catch from Murta just inside the ropes to get rid of Alex Blake for nine. Smith then had the dangerous Mahmood caught in his next over as Kent struggled to 105 for five in the 17th over, 50 runs still needed. Everything now relied on Stevens, who tried to ruin Smith's figures by planting him into the grandstand. But Smith got his revenge as Gilchrist completed his second stumping 
to give the youngster magnificent figures of 5 for 24 from his four overs, the best return of any bowler in the T20 this summer. Matt Coles knew that the game was just about up, barring a miracle as 20 were needed off the final over. He hit Murta for a six, but was then bowled going for the necessary slog as Kent ended on 141 for seven to lose by 13 runs. Dexter went for only 18 runs in his four overs as he and Smith ended the game as heroes. So Middlesex took full advantage of one of their games in hand to move back into the top four in the Southern Division. The match was their final one at Lords in this season's Friends Provident T20 competition and much of their work now has to be done on the road. It was, though, the perfect end to Gilchrist's time at Middlesex, and this is what he had to say at the end of the match. Very well done, Adam. Great game, that one. It was, yeah. It was a real fighting effort. Um, the wicket got slower and slower as the game went on, so posting a competitive total was, was good work by the, batting, uh, the batsmen, and then the bowlers were just excellent in their execution, so very pleasing. And a great performance from uh, Tom Smith.